Vorkuta is a coal mining town at the very north of Russia, behind Arctic Circle. This is also one of the dying towns in the country. According to official data, over the past 30 years the population of Vorkuta has decreased from 117,000 people in 1991 to 52,000 in 2020. Many urban localities around the town are completely abandoned. The lack of prospects in the once prosperous region has prompted thousands of people to leave it. The outflow of the population from Borkuta continues to this day, and therefore the question arises. What should everyone do with this, and should anything be done at all? If you look at the map, you can notice that Borkuta is a dead end, which is inaccessible by car. You can get here either by train or by plane. Air travel in Vorkuta is unstable due to frequent bad weather conditions. The railway is the most popular means of transport here. Train journey from Moscow to Vorkuta takes two days. I personally went to Vorkuta by train from Kirov. 36 hours of driving in a third-class wagon and I'm here, in the town at 67th longitude. So here we are at the main station of Vorkuta. Here it is. This is the passenger train that I took here. And this is the steam locomotive that was the first locomotive that ever been here in 1944. The Vorkuta still exists. People live here. However, the city itself is dying. So during the period of Soviet Union, Vorkuta was the capital of coal industry in the Republic. There were 13 operating coal mines. Uh, this city was thriving, probably. It's people from all over the Soviet Union wanted to work here because people who worked on coal mines uh, were paid greatly. And additionally, they got Norton coefficient for their salary. They got twice more than they were able to get at Kuzbas, for example, another region where the coal uh, was and still obtained. There are only four out of 13 mines that are active now in Vorkuta and therefore the city is now dying and this process caused a lot of abandonment in the city. So firstly there is not that much work outside of uh, coal mines. Secondly the temperatures here are quite low so the winter here lasts for nine months probably. Here is very very short Arctic summer. Like now, it's 15th of March. Even despite the fact that for the most territory of Russia it's still technically winter, in Vorkuta it's not even the end of winter. So it's gonna last here until the beginning of June probably when the last snow drifts will melt and then the normal life will begin. This is Vorkuta mechanic factory. It carries out maintenance and repair of mining and industrial equipment for mining enterprises of the Pechora Coal Basin. Pretty decent bus stop with warm waiting hall, so you can get here and wait for your bus in warm. Here is even some sort of little cafeteria, so pretty convenient. This is Metalistov Square, local bus hub. From here you can take buses to urban settlements that are located around Vorkuta. Pretty newly renovated building. Here are probably some offices. And in front of it is abandoned residential three-story building. So this is just a little abandoned quarter of three buildings. Look at the amount of snow in Vorkuta. <laughs> That's craziness. Man, let's go inside. Vorkuta is a reservation of Soviet architecture because it was built during the reign of Stalin. We can see some great stuff here. Look at this massive pile of snow on the roof of this building. We are at the very center of Vorkuta, at probably the most Soviet location ever. So here we can see some kind of gates in form of two buildings. This is Soviet emblem on top of that and the emblem of Vorkuta. 
and between them there is Mr. Lenin that is gazing straight to the palace of culture of miners. So you can easily find some kind of palace of sports, palace of culture in some cities that were developing during Soviet era. Vorkuta is not an exclusion. Many artifacts of Soviet life have been preserved in Vorkuta. The two most famous of them are houses facing each other with slogans on the walls, glory to the Communist Party of Soviet Union and peace to the world. There are also slogans glorifying the miners, old signs of shops and hairdressers, as well as small paintings. The main street of the city, Lenin Street, the buildings here were renovated, so they look pretty decent. So despite the fact that there is no road from the big land to Vorkuta, here you can still find some uh, widely spread retailers as Pitorichka and Magnit, so that's pretty cool. And the prices here are also more or less the same as in the rest of the country. How did all these vehicles that you have seen on the roads in this video end up in Vorkuta? Usually they are delivered to Vorkuta by rail transport. Cars are transported in auto racks and larger vehicles are transported on flat cars. The vehicles are loaded at the Sosnogorsk railway station in Komi. And then wagons with cars go to Vorkuta in a train consist. Such way of transferring cars is not a cheap thing. Transportation of a car in both directions can cost about 50,000 rubles. I found another Soviet corner in Vorkuta. So let's start from the very old bus stop with the letter A. It means autobus. This is some kind of roundabout and uh, some weird monument with red stars in its center. The honor of enterprise is everyone's business. Again, this is the link to collectivism ideology in Soviet Union, to communism. Kind of construction for pipes covered with wood with some national ornament, national decoration of Komi Republic. So despite the fact that Vorkuta looks pretty depressive, here is the light at the end of the tunnel. Newly built sport complex Arctica. Here it should be a swimming pool and probably something else. With a massive nine stories residential building, an incredible saying on top of that, Pakaritelem za Polarie Slava, or the glory to the conqueror of Arctic territories. Yes, the house appeared to be abandoned. A pretty interesting house because it has round corner and such corners were made specifically to protect the backyard from the wind that goes from here, from the river and from tundra. The monument to the victims of political repressions. Of course, to those that happened during Stalin's reign. The embankment of Vorkuta river and abandoned district called Rudnik. Probably miners live there because Rudnik can be translated as mine. In July 1932, the first coal mine was opened on the right bank of the Vorkuta river. The development of the coal deposit in Vorkuta was carried out mainly by the forces of the prisoners of Gulag. Industrial coal mining began two years later. The miners' settlement for 400 people was named Rudnik. Although the history of Vorkuta begins from Rudnik, the city itself began to develop separately on the opposite bank of the river. There was no direct road to Rudnik. To get here by car, you had to make a detour of several kilometers. The only direct connection with the city was the suspension pedestrian bridge, which today is in a deplorable state. The wooden covering of the bridge has rotted and partially collapsed, making it unsafe to walk on it. Rudnik was going through 90s hard. With the closure of the mines, people began to actively leave it. Today Rudnik is completely abandoned. However, you can often meet people here. On the opposite bank of the river is the Timan district of Vorkuta. Life is still in full swing there, and if you don't walk along the miners' embankment with a panoramic view on Rudnik, you might not even guess that there is a place within the city where time has forever stopped.
no drops of Vorkuta cars that are abandoned and covered with snow drifts. There is actually plenty of them. The following day I went to the abandoned urban locality of Cement Nezavodsky in 20 kilometers from Vorkuta. According to Wikipedia, the population of the locality was zero people in 2021. In the morning in Vorkuta, I took a direct bus to Cement Nezavodsky. I was the only passenger who got off the bus, and the first thing that I saw were snow-covered Khrushchev houses with broken windows and impassable snow drifts. Cementna Zavodsky. There is the bus. It's leaving. The next one will be in an hour. But the settlement itself seems to be completely abandoned. Cement Nozavodsky was founded in 1950 along with the opening of a cement plant. A road, kindergartens, shops, a school and other infrastructure facilities appeared here. By the beginning of the 80s, more than 5,000 people lived there. Hard times began in the 90s. In five years, cement production was almost halved, which soon led the plant to bankruptcy. In 2017, the only cement plant in the Komi Republic was closed. This event accelerated the extinction of the urban locality, and residents began to live it more actively. In some dying localities you can find blocks of flats with only 3-4 inhabitants. In such case the municipality has to hit either whole block or entrance hall with staircase, which is completely unprofitable. In Cement Nozavodsky you can observe completely surreal sense. Due to the fact that the settlement has not been completely disconnected from communications and the existing infrastructure is not properly looked after, the pipes in the basements of blocks burst and no one cares about it. In the entrances of blocks, where due to the spill of hot water, warm air from the basements comes out, Amazing snow corridors are formed on the staircases with huge icicles. Despite the supposedly zero population, people still live in Cement Nozavodsky. There is an active military base on the territory of the locality. Life is still goes on there. In the nearest future, Cement Nozavodsky will most likely be liquidated. The plant, which was the only major employer, closed down and people simply don't want to live in the middle of tundra without basic facilities and work. I believe that in a few years, no one, apart from the military, will remain in the locality. However, the case of Cementna Zavodsky is not unique. This is a typical example of a monotown, doomed to extinction in case of the closure of its only enterprise. The situation is better in the urban locality of Komsomorsky. There is an operating coal mine next to it, the deepest mine in Russia. So here we are in Komsomorsky. Most of the residential buildings here are abandoned, as well as the buildings of infrastructure. So here used to be the theater, the cinema or something like that. 
In the Soviet years, the population of the locality reached 18,000 people. Now, according to official data, about 600 residents live here, but according to my personal feelings, here is roughly more than 200 people. On the background of such amount of abandoned buildings, an active mine looks surrealistic. Talking about the infrastructure facilities in Komsomolsky, there is a post office and a grocery store. A bank branch operated here 10 years ago, but it was closed due to unprofitability. Komsomolsky also used to have kindergartens, a school, a hospital and a maternity hospital. None of this is remained. А вот смотрите, допустим, вот эта пятиэтажка. Тут я смотрю, часть подъездов такие заснеженные. А все выселили. Вот которые в центре, там да. еще живут. Там три или четыре квартиры заняты. То есть получается, тут отопления нет, там как бы да, есть, и типа, поэтому да, 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 такая да, штука. Да. А что тут вообще из инфраструктуры есть? Но ну, магазины я знаю там точно. Магазин, почта. Почта. Давят Фильмы. потихоньку, чтобы люди сами уехали. Зачем администрации заморачиваться, там делать на переселение что-то как? -то. Но я слышал, что здесь не особо это жилье предоставляют. Вот я и и говорю. Но все равно бывает, что жилье где-то предоставляют. Если да, то где? Только если по звукам конкретно еще никого не знаю. Ну, работают здесь в основном на шахте, на той, да? Или не обязательно? Ну, образующие шахты же, она на шахте, а так-то люди здесь и на ЦОФе, и в детском садике, и где только не работают. Now let's get inside the house number 24 of Zapolarny Quarter. So this is the water pipe that used for heating earlier. Let's get into random apartment. So only useless stuff is left. Some teddy bears, some toys for children. Oh man, <laughs> this is the iron by the way. Look at that. It used to be the apartment of Hvastovy family. They studied in Workuta. <laughs> this is what happens when you forget to close the window. So this is the main street, the main road of Zapolarny quarter this semi-abandoned building that I've just visited. Here is this red stars on the pillars along the street back to USSR. There are even no trails to some abandoned buildings because they are completely empty. There is just nothing to bring. Look at this interesting triangle construction. Probably abandoned bus stop. It's supposed to protect the passengers from the wind and snow. And here you can see the consequences of the absence of cleaning. Some kind of old schedule, but I don't think that these buses are still operate here. So I expected this blue building to be some kind of abandoned hospital or school, but it appeared that it was the administration of Komsomolska mine. You can even observe the abandoned settlement of Novi. So the majority of the population of the settlement lives here. Ex bank office. The only working ATB can be found now in the only working grocery store. So this is the thing that I was interested in the most in Komsomolsky. Such massive icicles. Now we are walking to Workershore settlement. The next point of Workershore circle I'm going to explore. We are walking along the main road that creates the circle around Workuta and connects all the settlements around it. While walking to Workashur, we are going via the remains of Straitelny settlement. Now it is presented as the ruins of some two and three stories buildings. Workashur urban settlement. It is named after the Workashur stream, which originates near the settlement. The root Worga means a deer trail, which gives the translation of the name 
Deer Trail Brook. So the settlement of Fergashore was founded in 1964 with the establishment of new coal mine and uh, that settlement was the biggest one in the entire Vorkuta ring. As soon as 19th happened, the USSR broke up. 65% uh, of the population of the settlement just gone and only 9,000 residents remain here. But this is still the biggest settlement in the entire Vorkuta ring because here is an active Vorgashorsk mine. Uh, this is the biggest mine in the entire ring, if I'm not mistaken. And plus, this is the biggest coal mine in the entire Europe. And uh, again, the mine itself is pretty developed and modernized. So here is the job. Therefore, people still live here. There are two schools in Vorgashor. So basically because there is no division into primary, secondary and high school in Russia. So students can study for 11 years in just one school without changing it. Interesting how the life here coexists with death. The warm versus cold. I don't know if this complex is abandoned or not, but this is the sport hall Varga Shoritz that can be translated as the resident of Borgesho, let's say, and the monument to coal. So this like construction is a cube of coal. Here is an inhabited, completely inhabited five-story building. Here is no life, just 20 meters away from it. So this backyard haven't been cleaned up during the winter and therefore we can observe just the virgin snow cover. Look at that. Cultural educational center, stuff like that. It's difficult to translate this Russian reality. And this is one of the main streets, the street of Katayev. Again, inhabited houses are mixed with uninhabited. The outskirts of Orgashur are also abandoned. I don't see any sense to explore them. They are more or less the same as the rest of the settlement. And Lenin. Mr. Lenin. Well, it's time to summarize. It is clear from the history of Vorkuta that people lived happily here until the Soviet Union collapsed. Steel mills began to close throughout the country. As a result, there was no need to obtain Vorkuta coal in the same volumes. The mines began to gradually close. Today the main enterprise of the town, Vorkuta Ugal, is owned by Severstal and sends coal there to Cheripovets steel mill. Despite the large reserves, today here is no need for the previous volumes of coal production, so it is unknown how long the Vorkuta mines will exist. Vorkuta is mesmerizing. It impresses not only with its buildings and architecture, but also with its people. Despite the harsh conditions of the Arctic, kind people live here. I have never been to a dog shelter before, but in Vorkuta I was given such an opportunity. Local woman showed me the shelter, which now houses over a hundred dogs. This unofficial dog shelter exists in Spartan conditions. There is no electricity. To be more precisely, it is, but it is supplied by a diesel generator. Local firefighters bring water to the dogs, since there is no borehole. The shelter almost entirely exists on donations. People bring food and stuff, donate money for the treatment of dogs. If you are not in deeper into the fate of animals, you can help the project by following the shelter's link in the description of the video. And that's it guys. See you in the next video.